Hello and welcome. This video will cover the electron deflection experiment in which we are going to study the behavior of electron beam under the effect of electrical field and magnetic field or magnetic field alone in the second part. So we got this electron deflection tube and we got a high voltage supply in here which is going to supply the electron accelerating voltage and the electrical field when the electric field is required and we got this power supply which supplies the coils in here which is going to produce our magnetic field you can have a look to the tube from this side so we got magnetic field due to these two coils and we got electric field due to these plates Normally, as you arrive to the lab, the experiment will be pre-connected to you. You will need to confirm that the connections are right based on figure 1 in your sheet. Then, you should be ready to switch on the apparatus. Uh, quickly, I'm going to cover the connections in here. At the back side of the tube here, we got two connections, which are connected to a fixed AC voltage 6.3 volt. And this is going to power the heater inside the tube and that heater is basically the electron source uh, there is a filament as that filament heats up is going to emit electrons but the electrons the emitted electrons will stay in the parameters of the heater till we accelerate them and for that purpose we are using this connections in here of high voltage to accelerate basically the electrons so this should be connected to the high voltage positive a negative high voltage should connect to one of these white leads. Then, at the first part of this experiment, we need to apply a electric field on these two plates, which you see them at the top and the lower end. So, we are going to connect the two sides of this electric field plates to both positive and negative high voltage. We are going to connect these two coils to the DC power supply in here. We are going to connect them in series in order to make sure that the same current is passing on both coils and that will ensure a uniform magnetic field. So, Z point in each of these coils is going to connect to the other Z point while the two A points are going to connect to the DC power supply. Before switching on any of these supplies, we need to make sure that the voltage, the high voltage knob is pointing to zero and the voltage in this is pointing to zero or at minimum. Then we should be able to switch both supplies. As we switch the supply in here, the high voltage supply, we got 6.3 fixed voltage connected to these. And that's why you can see the high heater is lighting up and you can see a little bit light uh, reflecting on this uh, window in here and inside there. As we increase the high voltage, we should be able to see the electron beam reflecting on the screen in there. So if I increase that using the high voltage uh, supply knob, you can see uh, there is a red uh, segment of light, each small segment of these is equal to 250 volts. Yes, again, 250 volts. So this experiment deals with high voltage. That's why we got this warning in most of the kits used in here. So this experiment deals with high voltage and you will be reaching about 4,500, sometimes 5,000 volts while performing certain experiments. So you should be extremely careful with the leads don't touch any of the wires and always use this type of uh, connections, the protected one. And if the supplies are on, never change the connection or touch any of the wires. Always, if you want to change the connection, switch off the supplies, both of them. Do any uh, connection change you want to do, then switch them on again. Before you switch them, so, uh, voltage should be reading zero. So, I'm going to increase the voltage now. So, I start to have the electron beam, which is in very nice blue color. 
and is being pulled up due to the electric field. This is positive of electric field and the electrons are negative charges so they are being pulled up due to the electric field. Now at this stage you might not see the electron beam so I'm going to switch off the lights so you can see them clearly and we can discuss further. So lights uh, switched off now we have much better view and it's very nice blue electron beam in there. Again, you can see the white light in here at the back side of the tube. This is due to the heater, while the electron beam is in blue color. As I mentioned earlier, as of now, we have only electric field applied. Electric field applied from the high voltage source in here and is uh, pulling the electrons up, as you can see, because the positive side of the electric field is at top. Now, at the first part of the experiment, while we are applying electric and magnetic field together, we need to make sure that electric and magnetic field as the opposite direction all the time. They should not act on the same direction. In order to make sure, we are going to increase a little bit the voltage in here, and that should bring uh, the electron beam down, because it will put it to the opposite direction. If that is not the case, then you'll need to switch off and uh, reverse the polarity of the magnetic field. So, you can see now, as I increase the magnetic field, I'm increasing the voltage to the coil, the voltage and current, and that is basically increasing the magnetic field. You can see it's going down based on the changes I'm doing. And the first part, we will need to make sure that the electron beam is leaving undeflected, which means it should pass at x10, y0, at the middle of the screen in here. You, there might be a little bit of curvature down there. You need to ignore that and make sure that the end tip of the beam is leaving at the middle at y equal zero. You can see now, as I change the magnetic field, the electron beams being deflected and affected by that. So you will be doing different steps at 250 volts in increment. So you will change the high voltage and you will need to see one uh, small box change at a time. And as you do that, the electron beam will be again pulled up due to the electric field. We'll need to equalize that with the opposite magnetic field by adjusting the voltage. So at each step, you will need to record the current and the voltage from this supply. You will need to be doing steps of 250 increments on the high voltage supply and then uh, make sure that the electron beam is passing at Y equals zero. You will repeat that till you reach 4,500 volts, starting from 1,500 at 250 volts uh, in increments. Now, this is at the start of the experiment. Uh, next, what we will need to do, we'll need to zero the magnetic field and zero the electric field, so you will not see the electron beam anymore, you will see just the heater light. Again, you will need to switch off that high voltage supply before you alter any connections. Then we are going to adjust the connection to be opposite. Both sides are opposite. So I'm going to do it quickly in here. Negative of electric fields going up. Positive is going down. And magnetic field connection opposite to each other. We switch on the supply again, we give it uh, a moment for the heater to heat up and start emitting electrons. Now, as you might expect, as we increase the high voltage, we, see, we will see again the blue electron beam, but pulled down this time because positive of high voltage supply is at the lower side of the tube, just like that. Now we need to repeat all the first step again, so we are going to apply some magnetic field and we'll need this to be pulled to zero at this time, again. 
So we will be doing again uh, steps of 250 volts starting from 1500 up to 4500 with adjusting the electron beam to bus at Y0 all the time. So as we increase that, this is going down due to the electric field, we will need to adjust the magnetic field to counter that, to make sure it's passing at zero. As this part done, we need to give this another trial with electric field cancelled or with zero electric field. In order to do that, again we are going to adjust the connection, we are going to remove both terminals of the electric field. We will remove any unnecessary wires, which is the positive and negative of the electric field. And we'll use one of these wires to make a short circuit connection between the electric field plates to make sure the electric field is zero. We'll switch the high voltage supply again. We'll give it a moment for the heater to heat up and we can increase voltage now. As we increase the voltage, we get the electron beam, the blue electron beam again, but this time is at the middle, crossing at the middle, because the electric field is zero and the magnetic field is still zero, we didn't adjust it yet. So it comes as a straight line and the middle passing at Y zero. In this stage, we will need to adjust the magnetic field in order to get a uniform, uniform radius. Uniform radius is like a part of the circle. So we expect the electron beam to cross at x equal 10, y equal 2. Or if we are doing it to the opposite side, as I mentioned earlier, we are going to expect it to pass at y minus 2. Something like that. So, your experiment is going to be into four trials. First, two trials with both electric field and magnetic field applied as opposite to each other, and we are going to flip them. The second uh, two trials is with magnetic field alone, two times. One with the beam pulled down due to the magnetic field, the second one is pulled up. So, at the first two parts, with both fields apply, you will need to see the beam crossing at y equals zero. And the second uh, two sets is going to e pass either by y equals minus two, just like what you see now, or y equal two. So this is basically it for the electron deflection experiment. You should be careful again with the leads, with the wires. Don't touch any of the wires while the experiment is running. We are dealing with very high voltage in here. Always reduce the supplies to minimum before switching them off to make sure that anybody switching them again is going to make, it will be at zero. So this is basically it. Thank you for watching. So back to light again, uh, this uh, second part of your lab will be the using the electron diffraction tube and in here we are going to do the diffraction uh, experiment. So we'll connect the circuits based on figure 2 in which we are using uh, this tube which basically get the fixed heater voltage similar to the first tube and get the accelerating voltage in here. This tube is sensitive uh, to current, so we are connecting uh, an ammeter in here and we got this reverse bias supply which is going to limit the current. This uh, voltage and current from this uh, reverse bias supply you don't need to take in consideration and you don't need to record it in your experiment. This is basically going to control the intensity of the electron beam which you will see next. This is to, again, to limit the current because this is a tube sensitive to current. Too much current might damage the tube permanently. So as we are going to switch on the high voltage supply, again, we will see uh, some light inside, which is the heater uh, heating up and start to emit electron. 
as we increase the accelerating voltage, we are going to see this ammeter start to move. This ammeter should not reach full scale. Always, if it's a start to increase in here, you need to reverse uh, or apply reverse bias using this voltage supply in here. We are getting uh, two refracted uh, rings on the front of this screen and one dot in the middle, which is the electrons which are not diffracted, which we are not interested in. So, during the experiment, we will need to get the diameter of the two circles using this vernier caliper in here. This vernier caliper is read in millimeters, so always you will need to move it to meet the size of the circle you are getting on the screen. If we assume this is the large uh, ring, we'll get the diameter of that, we'll record it, we'll read it from the vernier caliper, where in which we will need to meet the zero on the moving ruler to the number and the main long ruler, and that will give us the dimension in millimeters. And then we are going to reduce that to get the size of the small ring. The ring size will change based on the changes in the high voltage. We are going to start from the high range of the voltage at 4000 volts and we will go down ideally to 1500. However, it will be very difficult to get to see the rings clearly at maybe 2000 or below 2000. So we'll start from 4000, we'll go down to uh, whatever possible to read the circles in. I'm going to switch the supplies now and make sure they are both at zero and we can switch them on. As we switch them on, we will see the light from the heater similar to the other tube. And as we increase the voltage, we will notice the current is increasing in this ammeter. As we increase the voltage, you can see the meter is changing and we can see a green beam of electrons on the fluorescent screen. Now, again, due to the room light, you might not see the rings. So I'm going to switch off the lights again for you to see them clearly. Now, as we change the voltage, uh, the ring size will change. If the rings are not clear and the current or the current is trying to reach full scale in that ammeter, we can reduce both using the reverse voltage in here. So the reverse voltage will reduce the intensity of the electron beam, will limit the current going to the tube, which is going to protect the tube, and then sometimes will improve uh, the visibility of these two rings. Now I see them clearly. The large ring is about here and the small ring is there. As we change the voltage, the high voltage, the ring size will be changed and we will need to record both ring size at each step. So this is much shorter experiment compared to the first uh, experiment. We are going to do this once only in eight, step, 8 steps from 4000 volts down to 2000, recording both ring size at uh, each time. So this is basically it. Thank you for watching.